Welcome to my course on professional video editing with free software using HitFilm. The reason I'm creating this course is because a lot of people are using Adobe Premiere and Sony Vegas and other similar software to edit their videos for YouTube, Facebook, or whatever. And the problem is that these softwares cost a lot of money. And I went out to look for free software that I could use in case I was using somebody else's computer and they didn't purchase the software or for my friends that were trying to get into YouTube and didn't have uh, money to pay for the software and they didn't want to get into YouTube because they didn't have video editing software. Um, the best software out there today is called HitFilm Express. And today this course is going to revolve around using HitFilm Express. It's a completely free software with all the features that you will expect from software like Adobe Premiere, Sony Vegas, and some visual effects software that you will get from programs like Adobe After Effects. So you get a lot in this awesome software that's completely free. And I feel like personally, if more people use this software, um, they will be saving a lot of money over having to use some of the other software. Now, if they have it already or they got it from school or something, then that's great for them. But for people like you that um, is just starting out and don't have uh, software for video editing and want something that's completely free, um, this is a software to use. Now, this software is not like the easiest, but Adobe Premiere and some of the other software isn't easy neither. But hopefully in this course, I'm going to teach you a beginner's guide to using the software and you'll be able to start making videos right away. So I'm going to cover a lot of topics that will help you um, as you're editing videos um, and you're going to be able to learn a lot um, to be able to edit your videos right away. In this course, we're going to be editing uh, a whole project um, that I've created for YouTube. It was uh, a trip I made to Poland. I'm going to be editing 45 minutes of video into a shorter video. Um, it is a vlog of my trip over there that I shot with my iPhone. So no matter what type of camera you shoot video with, it could be a phone, it could be a professional DSLR, whatever camera you use, um, this is a software that you want to edit the video with. And then once you get good at this, if you want to purchase a more expensive software, you can. But really research the difference between the two and maybe you end up realizing you don't need any other software and this is good enough for you. So um, to start off, I want to um, show you how to get to the page where you download this. If you look up Hit Film on Google, it will take you here. Now, Hit Film has two versions, one that costs money and one that's free. The free one has everything you need, so you don't really need the one that costs money unless you're going to go into more complex editing. But for everything you will probably need, all you need is Hit Film Express. So when you type in HitFilm, FX Homes shows up and you can click here where it says HitFilm Express. Once you click that, it will take you right here to this page. And then you will click where it says get HitFilm Express free. Now, why is this software completely free and what did they get out of it? Well, actually, they make you share um, their page to other people whenever you sign up for it. What I mean is that whenever, well, once you click get HitFilm Express, they make you sign up and they will ask you to uh, share their page on social media through Google, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, one of those. And that's how they get exposure. And I believe that's why it's free, maybe to sell their other stuff that they're selling, um, add-ons uh, for the software and the pro, uh, the pro version of the software. So basically take advantage of it, get it for free. Press get HitFilm Express, sign up for it, give them an email, username, and password. It's very important you give them a valid email, username, and password that you want for your account. The reason is because the link that you need to download the software comes in your email. So you give them your email address, they'll send you a link to download the software. Now, once you click on that link, then you can uh, download the software. And when you download the software to activate the software, you have to log in using your username and password that you've created. Now, once you open the software that you've installed, it's very easy. Just click install and it will install. This page will show up when it opens. If it says activate on the top right, that means you haven't activated it. You click activate and you log in. Um, once you log in, it might still say activate. What you have to do is close the program and open it again or restart your computer. One way or another, the activate will disappear and then you can use it. Don't use the software if the activate is still showing on the top right because then what will happen is you're using a demo version and it won't let you export and create any of your edits 
you'll be able to play with the editor, but you won't be able to actually create any final videos. So that's the first part to this. Um, after this, we're gonna move on to actually creating files, um, video edits, and all the tools that this software has that you're gonna use as a beginner video editor. Okay, now we're gonna get started with creating a uh, edit from beginning to end. The first thing we're gonna do is open up HitFilm Express. Once you have this opened, what you're gonna do is click where it says new, or you can press file and new. Whichever one you pick, that's gonna open up a new project. Now, under template, you wanna always choose 1080p. Um, nowadays, nobody's using 720p. You can also edit for Instagram and 2K and 4K, but more likely you're gonna be shooting 1080p. Now, there's different frame rates, uh, 23.976, 24, 29.9, 30, 59.94, and 60 from frame per second. Now, hopefully you know by now what your camera is shooting in. Um, if you're shooting on a phone, you can look up what frame rate your phone is shooting in. Um, you're shooting with a DSLR, you can choose 24 um, frames per second, 30, uh, 60. Chances are you're going to be shooting at 24 frames per second, um, which in most cameras is 23.976. Now, the question is, should I choose 23.976 or 24? My recommendation is just shoot, choose 23.976. Um, the reason that number exists is because that's more accurate to what most cameras are shooting. They're not shooting perfect 24. They're shooting usually like 0 0.02 uh, something less than 24. Um, if you know you're shooting in 30 frames, use the 29.97. If you know you're shooting in 60, use the 59.94. Those are made because those are the accurate uh, frame rates that these cameras are shooting in. Um, so I shot this video on my phone right here. Um, if you don't know, another way to find out is you right click um, and click on details and you can see it's 29 frames per second. Um, it's actually 29 point whatever. Um, so on, on your video files, you can see on your computer what the frame rate was. Um, so this was shot in that, what's it called here, 29.97. This is the one that um, it was shot in. So that's the one I'm going to choose. Um, I don't, you don't pick a template and then change the frame rate. Uh, the template should have the frame rate, so just leave this alone. Leave the width and height alone. Leave everything else alone. This is just how you want it. Now, you can have compositing and editing. You're going to want to click where it says start editing. I'll go over what compos uh, composite, compositing means. But we're going to start with editing. So you click where it says start editing right here. Then it's going to open up something that looks like uh, reset. It looks like this. Now, um, first thing you wanna do is drag your file, so you're gonna be editing into this little box here where it says media. I'm gonna drag and drop this uh, video file. And then, um, right here, let me show you a little bit of this layout. Um, on the left side, bottom left, is this area that has your media files in, effects and other sorts. On the top left is this trimmer. What this trimmer does is allows you to kind of watch your video and trim the beginning and ends of the video. Now, here's the thing. I think the trimmer is useless. Um, you can do that already here in the editor. So there's no reason to need uh, this big box here, this blocking out uh, space for me to do my edits. So I'm going to get rid of this trimmer in a second. But that's what you're going to have when you first start up your program. On the right side is this viewer that's showing you the, the final result of the video that you're editing. On the bottom here is where all your files are going to be at that you're editing. Um, so this is the editor that you're going to cut and edit. And on the right here is this audio meter that tells you if the audio, what the volume of the audio is, if it's too high or too low. Now, I'm going to edit this, uh, this workspace to match what I want. So. First thing I'm going to do is, you hear where it says workspace up in the center. You click on that, and you can see what stuff you want to see. Now, I'm going to get rid of the one that says trimmer, and now I have no trimmer. Now, I'm going to want to, I want to drag this box here with this media next to this. In order to do that, I click on this box while holding shift. On a Mac or PC, you're holding shift. You hold shift. And you want to be right here near the top in this little blue area. You hold shift and click on that and then drag it 
and now you can move it anywhere you want. While holding on to it, I go on the top and click left of, like I put my mouse over this, and it's gonna put, a, I'm gonna move the box to the left of the preview screen. And when I let go, now this window is up here to the left of the preview screen. And now all my files that I'm using are up here. My preview screen is here, and I have this whole bottom spot to edit it. I can also make boxes bigger and smaller. So right here, I can drag this and make this bigger or smaller. This is as small as it gets, so that's fine. I can make this bigger or smaller. I don't need to make it bigger because the left and uh, left to right, this is as big as the screen can get. I can make this bigger by dragging this down, and now the preview screen is bigger. So when I'm editing, if I want to see the video um, and it be bigger, I can drag this down, press play, watch my video, and then drag this back up and keep editing. So I'm going to be dragging this up and down a lot as I'm editing. Now, here's all my files that I've dragged. You're going to drag audio files and video files. Your audio that's in your video is mixed in, but if you have music or, or audio clips of you talking you want to include with your video, they're all going to be dragged and dropped here. You can also press import and find it in your computer and then click open and it's going to be opened here. Here you'll see a list of all your video files that you're using to edit it. Now, once you have your video files on here, what you want to do is drag your video file to the editor. It says the editor sequence differs to the clip you're adding. Do you want to change the editor sequence settings to match the clip? The answer is always no. And I'll tell you why in a second. But I'm going to press no, and you're going to see here that the clip is smaller than the editor. And the reason is because my iPhone compressed everything into 720p instead of 1080p, and it made everything smaller. And I have two options. I can make the whole video smaller that I'm going to be editing, or I can make the clip bigger. And I want to make the clip bigger so the final video is in 1080p, full HD. So in order to do that, I have two choices. I can drag this corner and make it fit the box, which is the one I don't recommend you do. Or I can right click on this clip here. And then where it says transform, I click fit to frame. And that's going to make this full screen. So, so far, we've added my files, worked on my workspace, and I added a video to the editor. Now, if you like this workspace, if you created any custom workspace, like maybe you put this on the right side and this on the left side, or maybe you got rid of the audio meter here, whatever space you've created, you're going to want to save that workspace. So right here where is, uh, you have the workspace section, you're going to write create, you're going to name your workspace, and I already named it editing mine. These are the workspace options that they give you. Editing mine, when I click on that, it opens up like this. If I go to editing. It's going to take me um, to this custom one that they have with effects over here, the media here, the trimmer, and all of this. But I like my workspace the best, so I'm going to go to editing mine. And now I have the one that I've created. Now, once you've dragged your files and put them here in the editor, the first thing I recommend you to do is to save your file. To save your file, you click right here in this little save icon that says untitled project. It's right now unsaved. Click on this and you pick where you want to save it. So let's save this under free video editing. I'm going to call this hit film project. Click save and now it's saved. While you're editing your video, you always want to save your work over time. So you edit for a few minutes, save your work, edit for a few more minutes, save your work, get used to saving your work. If you don't save your work, you end up realizing that at some point you're gonna, your computer could turn off, um, this program could crash, um, the lights in your house could go off and the computer turns off. So many things can happen. You could accidentally press X and, not, and close the program. Whatever thing could happen has happened to me in the past as a video editor and I've lost my work. And it re comes back to the last saved spot that where I saved it. So you always want to be saving your work. And when you save your work at any moment, you can close the program, come back, open it, and continue where you left off. So make sure you're always saving your work. Now, let's go here into some of these buttons here that you're going to use to edit your work. Now, these are the tools that you can use to edit the 
files that you've put in the editor. This first button allows you to select the file and move it left and right. I can push it over here, I can push it over here. That's basically what the select tool does. This drag tool allows you to drag um, so let's say we're zoomed in a little. It lets you drag left and right to see different parts of the video. Uh, I'm going to show you this area down here. This is a zoom in tool to zoom in and out of your video file. So the scale of your timeline. You can drag this out. And this is zoomed out all the way so you can see the whole video. But this is 45 minutes of video. So I need to zoom in to be able to see certain parts better. Um, and then drag to the beginning. So I drag to the beginning. You can also drag up and down to see different files. Now, before I move forward, I want to show you what these tracks mean here. The video one is the video clip one that you've added. If I add another video clip, it's going to be video two. Audio one is the audio track that goes along with video one. Um, it used, or it could be uh, your video with no audio and then music that you've added. Whatever audio track is first inserted goes in audio one. When you add music, it's going to be under audio two. Now, if I go back to the select tool, right here is this opacity dragger. You don't want to mess with this, but if you do, let me show you what happens. If I drag this down, you're going to see that that video clip is disappearing. And you see that percentage that says 77, 64, 37, 100. 100 is as high as it goes. Basically, at 100 opacity, you can see everything. At around 50, half of the video is seen and half is see-through. So you can see stuff behind it. And at zero, you don't see any of it anymore. The reason why anybody messes with the opacity is if they have something on top of this, so another video file, and they want to kind of like kind of show it in a low opacity with whatever underneath this is showing at 100%. It's too complicated. Just don't mess with it. And leave it at 100%. Down here, you have this volume that you can drag up and down. Now, it's called levels. So right here at zero, that's the default volume of the audio that was shot in. If I bring the level up, one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 12, it's bringing the levels of the audio up 12, meaning it's just going to be louder. Uh, if I bring it down to negative, it's going to become, um, the volume's going to go down all the way to the bottom, negative 60. You're just not going to hear it anymore. So if something's too loud or not loud enough, you can raise this up and down to make it louder um, or lower the volume. Now, the next tool here is a slice tool. This allows you to cut in any point of your video. If you cut accidentally somewhere you don't want, you can press Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, um, or you can click right here, this undo. You see it says Control plus Z. This will go back anything that you did while editing. So if I cut somewhere I didn't want to cut, I can undo it. Now, the reason you want to cut is because that's what editing is. You want to cut things out of this 45-minute clip and delete it so that what's left is the final project. Let's say I cut this area here and here, and I want to get rid of this. I go back to my selection tool, click on it, and then press delete on your keyboard, and now it's gone. I didn't want to do that, so I press Control z Z, Z, or this undo button several times, and then it goes back to normal. Now, the next, the, all these other tools here, you're not really going to mess with um, as a beginner editor. And when you get into more advanced editing, you're going to play with these. But for now, you're just going to focus on these top three. Another thing you can do is when you right click this, you can change the speed from 100 to 200. So 200%. What that does is it speeds up the video, so now you're watching things in fast motion. Or the opposite, you can change it to 50%, and it makes everything go in slow motion. I'm going to press cancel now. 
you can do that on a clip as well. So let's say I sliced this little area here and I want just this area to be slow motion. I right click, click speed and duration, switch this to 50, press OK, drag this out and here's my uh, longer clip. And now I have this in slow motion. Now, you can press play here or press the space bar. And you can stop by pressing the enter key. So space bar, play, enter, stops, or space bar as well also stops. You can just press space bar twice to start and stop it. So you're watching this in slow motion. I'm going to undo all this. So those are your basics to editing. To watch um, at any point the, uh, anywhere in the clip, you can just move your mouse over on this top part here, this um, timeline area, and it will start anywhere. And then if you want to start from the beginning, you can press right here where it says move playhead to start, and you can start from the beginning. And then press play and watch. So that's a little introduction to some of the things we're going to be messing with um, to edit this. Um, in the next section, we're going to actually get into editing uh, this video. Okay, in this section, we're going to actually get to editing this video so you can see what it looks like to edit a video. So the first thing I always do is I start from the beginning and I watch my clip. So I press play. There's my clip. I think that's the plane that we're going on, M12. Now, the first thing you're going to notice um, on most computers, and this is affected by how good your computer is, is that it's dragging a little, it lags a little. What that means is that it's not playing smoothly, um, it's playing a little choppy. Um, there's several things you can do to fix that. The first thing you can do is um, on this clip here where it says options, playback quality, I mean playback resolution, you can press where it says quarter or half. I like to leave it at quarter um, and what happens is you're not seeing the full quality of the video but it's going to play back smoother so let's go back to the beginning press play and believe it or not it actually is playing a little bit smoother um, the other thing you can do is uh, we go back to the beginning here is you can so when you go to the clip here and you right click on it you see this thing that says pre-render. When you click make pre-renders, you're going to see on that file this little circle thing. What pre-render is, is it basically um, watching the whole clip on the computer and saving the preview of the whole clip. So when you preview it now, it's going to play smoothly. The problem is that it takes up space in your computer. It takes a long time to pre-render stuff. And it really like takes away from the process of editing because when you add any effects or anything, you'll have to pre-render again. So um, usually I just avoid pre-rendering, but when it's just bothering you too much, it's going way too slow, the clips are too important, you have to watch everything to see if it's good, a recommendation is to pre-render. I'm going to right-click here, pre-render, and cancel pre-render. So those are two ways to make um, this project play smoother. Um, so, like I said, I'm watching the clip. I think that's the plane that we're going on, M12. And then it cuts to the next clip of me uh, at the uh, airport store buying orange juice. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. So I've zoomed in there, and then I just go back a little to the part where it cuts. So right about there, I'm going to cut this. I have clip one and clip two. Now, usually, all of these are going to be different clips. I put all these clips together from my phone before starting this um, so that it's just one full clip. Um, but usually you're going to have them be separated into different clips. So it will already be separated. But I had to watch it and separate it manually. Okay. So now I'm going to move this over a little bit. Just this first clip here. 
I want to edit this. The way that I edit this is I find the part that I'm going to use in the video. So I'm going to go back to the beginning, press play. I think that's the plane that we're going on, M12. So that part right there where I zoom in and out and say that that's the plane I'm going on is all I need from this clip. So now I'm going to cut this right there and I'm going to erase this part. I'm going to click on it and press delete. Now, if you go to the edge of a clip, you can actually drag and it's going to erase parts of the clip. And you can see what part is going to continue on. So I'm going to erase this little part with the uh, plane and stop right here. So this part's already erased. Just by clicking on my mouse with this little symbol here is a trimmer symbol. It's trimming my video from the beginning and then I dragged it over to the right. Now I move this over here, and now it looks like this. So I'm over here. M12. Okay, that's good enough for this clip. I'm gonna cut it there. I'm gonna drag this out over. And another way you can edit is uh, grab the trimmer, Drag this over, watch everything, and, I, and then just erase. So I kind of like this. I'm going to go. And like you should already know what these clips look like. So I'm going to start right here. Let go. So I didn't like the part where I go look down, so I'm going to go backwards right there. I'm going to cut it right there. And I'm going to drag this part right here. And then I'm going to fast forward this. Okay, we're getting on the plane. This lady is annoying. She's just standing there. Uh, move, 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 lady, move. Another guy in the way. Drag this over. If you accidentally double click on it and it takes you to this trimmer, you can go back and go back to your workspace. Editing mine. And now I'm back here. Okay. Let's press play here. Okay, this little clip of me walking is good enough for me. I'm going to cut it right here. There we go. We have this next clip, and I'm putting those clips in order. And I'm going to drag this, erase all this, erase all this. Drag this over. Erase everything, erase everything. I'm here looking at the pillow. And I like this clip of me looking at my little screen. I <laughs> want to cut out a little area so I click on that I'm scrolling I'm gonna cut right there and I'm gonna fast forward to right there I'm gonna cut there and I'm gonna get rid of this part now I have this clip right here this clip right here and so far so I just keep repeating this process all the way till I edit the whole video. Now, now let's say I want to watch this video. I go to the beginning. I can scroll down here, make this bigger. I can scroll this over. Now I'm watching this in real big. So I press play. I think that's the plane that we're going on. M12. Mama, I must have a ski. 
And that's it. That's as much of that that I've edited. Now, um, from here, from here, I'm gonna now add some music um, because I know that I don't want the audio from these videos to play. I'm not saying anything important. I want music to be played in the background of this of this video. So I'm gonna add music in the next section. We're gonna talk about music and adding other elements to your video edit. Okay, now in this section, we're gonna be adding music and other elements. The first thing I need to do is find the music track that I want on my computer, and then I drag and drop it here to this box that has uh, all my files on. So here's the song that I've picked. I'm gonna add it here. Next thing I need to do is add it to the editor. Now, there's already a video track and an audio track, uh, so I need to add another audio track to my editor in order to add um, this song to it. So let me show you. What you want to do is right-click where it says Audio 1 and click where it says Insert Track. Now you have Audio 2. You can rename that to Music, and now you can drag and drop this under Music. And now I have Music there. Now. I'm gonna press play and see what that sounds like. Now, the problem I'm having is I can hear the audio from the video here and the music at the same time. I don't wanna hear the audio from the videos on top. So what you're gonna do is right here where you see um, it says audio one, I'm gonna mute it by pressing this. This mutes this. Now, if you don't wanna mute the whole track, what you can do is unmute it and go track by track and just lower this all the way down. So I click on all these clips and I lower it all the way down. Now I go to the beginning. And this was a little bit loud, so I'm going to bring this down a little just for the purpose of this uh, course and the, how loud it is. I'll press play. <laughs> This sounds amazing. It looks pretty great. Um, this is free music I found for vlogs. Um, in another course in the future, I'm going to be talking about music for videos. But if you were to find music um, for your video, what I recommend is make sure that there's no um, like copyrights, first of all. And second is that there's no talking. Um, so kind of music without um, lyrics. This is what this is. Um, so there's no lyrics on this uh, music, and it plays really well with my vlog. Uh, music without lyrics play really well in the background or videos. So you want to find music like this. Um, I have a whole list. Um, uh, so if you eventually find, um, just research online, uh, music for vlogs, uh, music, uh, background music. And it took me a while to find good music. Once you find good music, download them and add them so you can put them in your videos. Like I said, there's going to be a course later on about that. So once you add the music in there, you can lower and raise the volume. You have track one, track two. Um, and then let's say uh, I'm saying something right here, okay? So I'm gonna trim this to this area right here. Now, you see these little waves, these little waves here. These little waves here under the audio is actual sound coming from that audio track. On the music, you see all these little waves, meaning there's this music playing throughout. Um, right here, there was very little sound, little sound. Here, there's a lot of sound. As I fast forward, you see less sound here and more sound here. That means there was actual sound playing, or maybe I was talking, and here there's no talking, very little sound. So I fast forward to this part where there's sound, and let's say I want to hear that. So this is uh, all the way up, and I want to lower the music so I can hear that talking. What I gotta do is, while having this clip um, clicked on, I'm gonna drag this over, right there, and I'm gonna cut that uh, music right there, so it's cut. And then this music, I'm gonna drag this volume down. And now it's gonna look like this. I 
can't hear the music at all, so I'm going to raise the volume of the music. Go back. And now you hear the music and the sound from the video file. Now, I wasn't talking here. It was just the sound of the plane. But if I was talking and I want to hear that, I will do that. I will raise the volume of the, the video file, this audio where I'm talking, and lower the volume of where I'm not talking. So that's how you would do that. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is transitions. I don't really use transitions, but if you guys want to use transitions, um, I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you will do is you will go to this area where it says the effects on here on the top left. You will scroll down to where it says transition video. Click on this little arrow. It's going to drop down all these different um, transitions. They're categorized by these folders. I'm going to go to the first one that says the solve. Um, pick one. So you don't really know what they look like until you add them. So I'm going to click on the first one and you'll learn what they look like so you know which ones you like and use those. And then drag it right in the middle of clip one and clip two. So now when I go back here and press play, let me show you what's happening. Is dissolving into the next clip. So that's how you do transitions. You just uh, pick a transition you like and you put it in the center. Um, if you don't like the transition, you can click on this and press delete, and that transition is gone. So that's how you add transitions. I don't really add transitions, but some people like to have transitions between um, clips so that it just doesn't cut to the next clip. It kind of either dissolves or swipes right to the next clip or disintegrates into the next clip. Whatever you choose to do for your clips, that's how you do it. And now I'm going to talk to you guys about adding text. So um, one thing that's very popular is to add a title to your clip. So um, in order to do that, you need to start a new composition. In this section, we're going to be adding text to this video. So in order to add text, you have to add what's called a new composition. So right here in this media tab, I'm going to press new and composite shot. So when I click on that, I can write the name of the text, title. You, duration doesn't matter. You can leave it at 30, you leave everything else the same, and then press OK. Now you see here, here's the editor tab, here's the title tab. It's kind of like two boxes, the editor, where you're editing the video, title, double click on this title is kind of like a video file that's just going to be the title It's another clip is another uh, file that you have here on your media bin and this one's just going to be for the title so it's 30 seconds long it's like a video which is just your title and you're going to add text to it don't worry about the duration just focus on what text you want to add so you click right here where it says text and then you create a box okay and then you write what title you want so I'm going to write hit film video. OK. Now if I highlight all this text, I can go to this text column and change the size. You see, um, when you go to the size here, you can click and drag left and right, and it's going to change the size. Don't worry so much about the size, because you can change it later to fit the video. And I'll show you that in a second. You can change the font, right? So you can go up and down and pick one. I kind of like this one. I'm going to leave it at that. So you highlight the thing. You click right here, this large gray box. And you click a color you want, red. Hit film video in red. So that's the area here. Here is going to change the space between the text. So I have to highlight everything, drag. And it's going to make the space left and right. If once you pick the the font, the size, the color, what you want to do is exit this out, go back to editor, and you're going to add a new video track, call it text, and a new audio track, call it text. Um, then you're going to go back to your media bin, title, and drag this here. It's going to add uh, one for here with text and an audio file. Now this composite doesn't have any audio, it's just text. 
So to delete this, you can just right click here and delete track. Yes. And now you just have the text. And that's how you add text. Now, to move this text around, with the selection tool selected, you can move this around and you can change the size. So that's why it didn't matter what size it was. Place it where you want. You can make it longer, thinner, whatever. I want to put it right here. And then I press play. play. Now I want it to stop there, so I drag this and it's gonna stop there. I want it to be the length of this clip right there. Press. And then it stops. So that's how I added text um, to this video. It's very complicated in my opinion. It should be easier. But um, it's a complicated software that allows you to do a lot. So it's supposed to make it makes the simple things look more complicated. But because of that, you can do even more than you can imagine. Um, if you want this to um, not be as bright, you can lower this opacity and it kind of like disappears. That's another thing you can do with text if you want. Um, so that's it when it comes to adding text. Um, you can add titles, you can add text throughout the video, put them anywhere you want in the video. Um, and that's it, music and text. Um, in the next section, I'm gonna show you uh, a final clip of my edit so you can see what that looks like. Okay, in this section, I'm gonna show you the edit that I actually uploaded to YouTube so you can kind of see what the edit looks like I'm going to press play right now. That's my edit. Um, it's just a little part of a full video that I put together, a series of me traveling to Poland. Um, I wanted to show you that you can use a software like this to edit video, um, add music, add tags, um, very simple stuff. Over time, um, you really need to study this uh, software and play with it and see what you can do and add to it. If you have an idea and you don't know how to do it, look it up and figure out um, how to do that within the software. Um, so that's the final edit. Now, in order to render it, and what I mean is put all this together and make it into a final video, what you want to do is click on top right where it says export. When you click export, um, you're going to want to click on the one that says editor. Um, and this is the one that you want exported. Um, so right here, you have different options of what preset you want to use. I recommend the one that says uh, YouTube 1080. 
So that's the one that uh, is for YouTube. Um, it's going to edit a MP4, and then you're going to be able to use it for YouTube. So I have that. And then you click export in and out on the one that says editor. Export in and out means that it's going to export the whole thing that you have in there. Now, um, once you have this queue, this export thing that you're exporting, you click where it says output, right click on that, and pick a location, pick a folder. So you find the folder where you want to shoot, uh, save it, and write the name of the file. After you did that, then what you're going to do is right click on this box and click start exporting. Then by dragging this over, you can see the progress, start time, elapsed time, and how much time remaining um, before it's completely done. Now this is an estimate. You're going to see it go up and down based on certain elements in your video. It could guess that it's going to take 10 minutes, and then it gets to a complicated part in the video that you did a lot of edits in. And it's going to turn that 10 minute into an hour, and then once it's done um, with that part, it's going to go back down drastically. So don't really rely on the remaining um, time. Just wait for it to be done. Um, so like I said, again, you go to export, click on the one um, that you want, which is the editor, click export, in and out, click YouTube, click where it says output, so you don't lose the file, you have the right folder and the name, and then right click, start exporting. That's it, from, then on, from there you have your final video that you uh, did with HitFilm Express. HitFilm Express has a lot of tools, it will literally take you 100 hours to learn everything. So don't worry about everything it can do. Just focus on one project at a time. Watch a bunch of videos on all the things that HitFilm can do. Hopefully this course helped you guys out and you guys can create um, your first videos. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below. Check out my other courses. And I'll see you guys in my next uh, course.